Welcome back to Preparedness, where we talk all things prepping and getting a little bit more self-sufficient. Today, we are digging into finances. And the reason I think finances are so important is because they set a foundation for us to be more prepared regardless of what is going on. Today, we're gonna to talk about five ways to get more prepared from a financial perspective for all of your prepping needs. I got interested in personal finance in my mid 20s and I am incredibly thankful for that because it really set me off on a strong foundation in terms of being mindful about my debt and my savings and my retirement investments and that has set me up well as I have gotten older. When we get into prepping, I think it is important to talk about our financial health because when we are financially healthy, we can be more confident, more secure, we don't have to worry about things in the same way. I think the first strategy that all preppers should be using and really all Americans should be using is reducing the amount of debt that we have. When we have debt, it means we have that monthly outlay of cash to go towards payments, whether that is cars or houses or school loans, things like that. It is something that has that recurring bill attached to it that we can't get out of regardless of what is going on around us. When we think about that with our prepper hat on, what that means is if for some reason we lose our job or something happens to our community where I am not getting a paycheck, the bank doesn't care. They're going to keep coming for that debt regardless of what is happening. Now, there are some instances where the federal government will do debt relief or pause payments on things, so that is an option at times. But again, as you know, we don't necessarily want to rely on the government to take care of all of our things in an emergency situation. So reducing the amount of debt you have does two things. One, it gives you a little bit more peace of mind if something bad happens that hopefully you can cover all your bills. And two, when we reduce our debt, it gives us more disposable income, which we can use later on down the road as we get down these financial tips. But the second thing is just building an emergency fund. It doesn't really matter which financial guru that you follow, whether that is Dave Ramsey or David Buck or Sherry Orman, like they all tell you that you need to have an emergency fund and that or a rainy day fund. That is just a place to park some extra cash so that when you have those unexpected events, you have a cash reserve that you can use to pay for it. Let me give you an example. Recently, my husband was in a little fender bender, someone rear-ended him, and they didn't have insurance. So we had to end up paying the deductible out of pocket. Now, our deductible is not super high, but it is still a significant amount of money. And we felt incredibly lucky that we had an emergency fund and we were able to just pay that without worrying about how it was going to affect the rest of our budget. Had we not had some good financial health things in place, then that would have become a much more stressful situation. Now magnify that in the case of an emergency or natural disaster where maybe something happens to your home or something happens to where you are living that creates a lot more chaos and a lot more drama. In order to kind of be ready for those types of events, we want to have a strong financial foundation. It sounds basic, but again, when we start talking about emergency situations, having that buffer can become incredibly important to reduce the stress and reduce overwhelm. Again, an emergency situation might not be a natural disaster or something that interferes with your home. It might be a job loss. Having an emergency fund and lower debt is going to allow you to weather that kind of storm more easily than someone who is living right on the edge. The third thing is having insurance. So hopefully you have insurance. I am guessing if you are a prepper, you do because let's face it, being a prepper is kind of like having insurance for every facet of your life. We are preppers because we wanna be prepared for the unexpected, which is really what insurance is doing for you. You wanna make sure that you have good home policies, good auto policies, things like that, especially if you are in a weather prone area. When I used to live in Florida, I think I had four kinds of insurance on my house. I had storm insurance and flood insurance and hurricane insurance and regular insurance because those were all things that could affect my house in that area. And so I wanted to make sure I was ready for that regardless of what happened. Take a few minutes and figure out where you live and the things again that are most likely and look at some insurance options. If you have built up an emergency fund, you can use higher deductibles, which will then help reduce your monthly cost, which is another great 
great way to, again, give you a little bit more disposable income. For the first three ideas are really just what I will call basic financial health. I think they are things that we should all be doing regardless of whether or not we are a prepper, but I think they are magnified when we are a prepper. And that is simply reducing our debt, having an emergency fund, and having good insurance. Those things help set a financial foundation for you regardless of your situation. The next two are really focused, I will say, on the prepping journey itself. The first one is making sure that you have cash on hand. I think cash for emergency situations is absolutely a necessity. Now, every family has to decide the amount of money that you are comfortable having on hand in terms of cash. Here are some things that you wanna think about from a cash perspective. You wanna have enough cash that you could get a hotel room for a couple of days in cash or buy groceries in cash or gas if you were trying to evacuate from an area and the card machines were down. What happens in emergency situations sometimes is the vendors lose the ability to take credit card transactions. And so having cash allows you to get in front of the line in front of people who don't have cash. And let's face it, most Americans today do not walk around with cash in their pockets or their purses. I almost never carried cash before I became a prepper. And now I always have at least a couple hundred dollars somewhere where I can have access to it pretty quickly. We also store some extra cash in our safe for if we needed to evacuate and we wanted to take cash with us to be able to pay again for some of those essentials that we believe are potential options. As you are storing money, you wanna think about a few things. You wanna think about where you can store that money safely so that if something happens, your money doesn't disappear. Now, I am not one of those people who believes if I carry around cash, I'm more likely to get robbed. I just don't think that is really likely unless I walk around flashing the cash all the time, then you might be more likely to get robbed. If you have it in your purse or your wallet, chances are everyone's going to assume you are like the rest of the Americans out there and you just have credit cards, right? So I don't think that it puts you at greater risk, but in terms of storing it in your house, if you are storing it for long term, you might wanna think about ways to kind of keep that money safe, whether that is a lockbox or a safe or fireproof envelopes, which I love because I think that they are a great way to store money in your house that also protects it from a fire if there was one. I'll drop a link below to those fireproof envelopes. I think they're absolutely great just to have for your house if you are going to store cash. The other thing to think about if you're storing cash is just having a lot of different denominations. You don't wanna have necessarily just 20s or just 50s. You wanna have some smaller bills too, and that is just because if you're going in to buy something quick off a grocery store shelf or something like that, you don't necessarily, again, wanna be flashing a 50 or a 20, and the stores may or may not have enough cash to give you change, and you don't wanna get kind of price gouged in terms of what you are paying for something. So when you store cash, just have a variety of bills kind of available for you to use depending on what the situation requires. And then the fifth thing is just creating a budget for your prepping. So again, when you get into this space and you kind of start down this path, it can be really easy to want to invest in a lot of different things, whether that is food or resources or supplies or things like that. We wanna be spending wisely on prepping so that we are still contributing to our overall financial well-being. What we don't wanna do is drain our emergency account or live right up to the edge of our budget and kind of spend all of our extra money on prepping. I don't necessarily think that is a good idea. Spend some time with your spouse or your family and talk through what a comfortable number is for you to use each month or each quarter for prepping supplies. Again, that is one of the things that my husband and I found was super useful was just having a line item in our budget for prepping. And that way, when I went out and bought the buckets for our food or the solar generator or whatever, I could show him in our budget, hey, don't worry, we planned for this, we are okay. And then it just reduced the stress because you're always going to have a spender in a relationship and a saver. And so having that conversation up front can really help reduce the stress from a preparedness perspective. So again, money, not normally kind of something we talk about from the preparedness space, but I think it is absolutely essential that you come up with a way to feel like you have a solid financial footing and you have a plan for your prepping so that you can feel really confident as you step into this space and know regardless of the emergency that you are prepared. If you haven't done so already, do me a quick favor, hit like, hit subscribe. That really helps me know that this information is useful to you or just drop a comment below and let me know what you would like to hear more about.